Hey, what's going on everybody? My name's Chad. This is the Cabrio Love Channel. Welcome to episode number three. This is the episode where we're gonna give Brittany the car. Uh, this actually happened last night. Today is Friday, December 20th, and uh, she did get the car last night. So let's take a look and see how that happened. All right, Brittany's gonna open her Christmas gift. It's a little bit early, but... Here comes the Christmas gift. I can only imagine. Since your video right next. All right, so that's the pass to get in the, the shop. Okay. And on the shop, we had this sign up today that said, don't go in, no, I don't go in here yet, off limits. Okay. But she has the pass. Okay. So we can go in. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Merry Christmas, baby. You have a cabrio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Was this what she went down to Illinois to pick up? It is. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. All right, so we've been out here for about five minutes. She hasn't stopped laughing. <laughs> and uh, laughing in, in, in joy. Yes, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. How long have you wanted one of these? <laughs> Since I was like 15 or 16. <laughs> this is my like dream car. Yes. Yeah. So here we are. <laughs> 20, I won't say exactly, 20 plus <laughs> years later. Yep. And you got a cabrio. Yes. <laughs> oh, here's the keys, by the way. Why is this like all oh, I took that off because there's there's one little piece broken, so I'm gonna replace that. Oh, scooch it up there. I know. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. You like it? Yeah. Yeah. It'll be ready for you in the spring. Okay. Good. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Oh my gosh. That's a good job, babe. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Finally have a cabrio. Finally have a cabrio. <laughs> Merry Christmas, baby. Thank you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right, so we're back in the house, and what did she just say? Sam is in shock. Still in shock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Best Christmas gift ever. <laughs> uh huh. Man, Twenty-five years yeah. in the making. <laughs> That was such a fun time last night. She absolutely loves the car. So um, <laughs> now that she knows about the car, it's gonna stay here in the garage 
and uh, I'm gonna get to work on it. You can see it still has the bow on it. Take that off and uh, get started. I've got the uh, garage warmed up to 62 degrees already. Uh, the heater is shut off right now. I just shut it off. It's been running for maybe a half hour, but it's not gonna take a whole lot to keep the shop warm today. It's uh, supposed to be up around 36 degrees. Uh, I think it's about 31, 32 outside right now. So heater doesn't have to work that hard to warm it up, but uh, yeah, we're gonna get started. I think that uh, first thing I'm gonna do is start working on getting this flex tape off the rear window. I don't have parts yet for the, the new lock mechanism, uh, the air pump mount, all that stuff. I, I gotta start buying some parts now that the car's here. But uh, this is probably going to take some heat application, and uh, then I'll figure out how to get the residue off the off the vinyl. Hopefully, it comes off. So and that's uh, what I'm going to do first. Need to get some more lights turned on and get some music playing. All right, so I got the first piece off. Uh, I'm using the heat gun, just a regular uh, Wagner heat gun. Most people have those or something like that. So the tape is actually coming off fairly easily, but it is leaving the uh, glue behind, which I figured it would. So um, I did start to kind of push it back right here. Uh, once it's heated up, it does kind of roll up into a ball. Um, I think it's probably gonna leave um, some more residue behind, which I'll have to figure out how to clean up, but it's coming off fairly easily. You know, it's not that big of an area, so it shouldn't take too long. Uh, but really no reason to record the heat gun in action. Flex tape is off. It looks nastier now than it did before. But if you just take your finger and keep it warmed up, it does kind of start to roll back. So I need to get all this glue off. I'm gonna come back to the vinyl and just work on the glass for now. This is actually, you can see it's already coming off pretty easily using the scraper here. So if I get it nice and flat on the window, the glue just glides right onto the blade. Scrapes right off end up with this big goopy mess on the blade. With the light reflecting, it actually looks worse, but it's actually starting to get better. I've only worked up to about here. So what I've been doing is heating it and then using a plastic spatula and just kind of scraping it with the uh, grain of the vinyl and then coming across the grain of the vinyl, it's lifting it out. So. Starting, I mean, I've got the top layer of goop off and uh, you can see here, this is what it looked like. This is the thick stuff. So I'm heating that up, scraping it off, getting it to this, and then uh, I'll have to figure out what kind of uh, cleaner or, or oil or something to start to get this residue lifted out of the vinyl. All right, well, I just had a little bit of a deflating moment here working on this top. Um, I got the flex tape off. It's got this residue left behind. And uh, I just went to put the pillows inside, as you can see through the window there, just to give that glass some support. And I realized something that I'll show you right now. So if we climb in the car, Previous owner not only stuck flip, uh, flex tape on the outside, but also on the inside. I mean, I guess I get why this was done if you didn't want to fix it correctly. So at some point I have to consider the amount of time that it will take to correct this, which means, you know, cleaning all the goop off doing the same thing on the inside where it's very difficult to see and work, uh, get the rear glass glued back in versus just spending the money and buying a new top. Now, new tops range from uh, 
high 300s um, with an aftermarket vinyl and plastic window to around $750 for an OEM top uh, with the glass window with defrost. So I'm going to weigh those options and um, I'll make a decision at some point for now. I'm going to stop on the uh, um, getting the goopy glue off this top and just stew over this for a little bit and uh, figure out what is probably or figure out what would be the best course of action. Um, I will tell you right away, I'm automatically just leaning towards buying a new top. Um, it's a summer car. Not even sure we really need the glass um, with defrost. So, uh, you know, the cheaper top with a plastic window might be the best option for this car uh, because Brittany will be driving this with the top down probably 100% of the time. I can't, I don't see why she would drive this uh, in the rain so with the top up. So, all right, on to something else. I didn't do a very good job of uh, videoing this. In fact, I didn't video it at all, but the seat is out. This is the passenger seat, but I can tell you it's super easy to do. Um, the seats are on these rails on either side, and then there's this channel here that uh, the slider on the seat goes through. So all you have to do to take the seat out if you're looking to do this is remove that nut and bolt. It's an Allen um, two and a half millimeter uh, Allen or hex head on this side and then a 10 millimeter acorn nut on this side. Take that out and this slider here pops right out of that channel and then you just move the seat all the way back and it comes out the back side of the, uh, the rails there. So super, super easy to do. And now I'm working on removing this panel there's two screws here and here. There's two screws at the uh, uh, speaker. Uh, this screw here had to come out. That's the where the boot, uh, the top boot cover attaches to that. And then there's one more fastener right there that I'm working on getting out. I haven't figured that one out yet. And I think this will just slide out. And I'm taking that out so that I can get to the backside of this dent to see if I can just push it out uh, or gently tap it out. So that's the project I'm working on right now. I've uh, got the door panel off, uh, disconnected the negative cable from the battery, so no electrics to worry about while doing this, especially when I know this airbag already deployed, but I just want to make sure that there aren't any issues, uh, specifically when I take that seat out, because uh, that airbag is still charged. So uh, let's see if I can get that panel out and work on this dent a little bit. Project number one, pretty much done. I've got the dent pushed back out, nice and straight with the rocker panel. There's still a little bit of a crease that you can see right down there where the rust, um, line of rust is right here this whole area is going to get um, ground off because I got to take care of that rust spot so I'm just going to grind right along that line and if there's any spots that um, can be uh, or just use a little bit of filler to smooth that out I'll do that but really you almost can't even tell so you step back you know right where to look on the video because that's where the rust spots are. But if the rust spots weren't there and I had made a little bit of a dirty line by tapping with my uh, hammer, you wouldn't be able to see it. And I'm, I don't have any planishing tools, so I'm kind of doing a uh, <laughs> kind of, I guess, a poor man's version of um, metal work here, at least on this part, using a uh, soft blow Hammer, not a dead blow hammer, just a soft blow. And then I put this piece of, of a PVC pipe together. So using the PVC on the inside, down inside there, underneath the rear window uh, actuator, I was able to use the hammer and this end of the PVC to get some decent 
um, surface area and that dent popped right out. It looks really good. Now the trim piece that I took off, I am gonna have to uh, replace these little orange plastic things because half of each one of them broke off. So that's not gonna stay in place very well. But it did straighten out nicely. So um, I'm guessing this is some sort of molded plastic. It's not metal, it bent, bent real easily, but that's nice and flat. So that'll go back in place after I get those uh, new tabs and that'll look really good. To show the tr uh, trim back in place. It's, uh, I mean, it pops right off because those tangs are broken, but that's perfect. It'll snug up just a little bit more once the uh, plastic tangs are back in there, but that looks awesome. That's good to uh, sort of get towards the end of the day and have a little bit of, su of uh, success after struggling with the glue on the top. And uh, I think I pretty much made the decision that that top's gonna go and we'll put a new one on, so. I think I'm gonna take the other seat out. You know, taking the seats out gives me an opportunity to make sure everything's nice and clean anyway, so. All right, it's a new day. Uh, I don't remember where I left off uh, videoing um, stuff yesterday, but I know I didn't capture everything that I was working on. I did take the front wheel off and removed both the seats, so they're over there. The seats, I'm actually going to, We, I think Brittany and I have decided that because these seats are still in decent shape, other than the side of this one being blown out from the airbag, I think I'm gonna take this next door to my neighbor who can stitch anything, stitch that seat back up, and then we'll put seat covers on these and make them look nice and new. Um, the On the wheel here, you can see there's a rub right there. I don't know for sure. Maybe somebody can tell me. I think this is supposed to be round and it's flat. So I'm wondering if when this car hit the curb, if this is the part that bent. Um, I gotta take the other wheel off and I'm gonna compare this, compare them side to side. Uh, what else did I do? I don't think I really did much of anything else beyond that. We are going to replace the top, we decided that. So I don't know if I'm just gonna do new, new vinyl, keep the window and, and uh, glue the window in a new vinyl or if we're just gonna replace the top entirely, but we are going to do that. One thing I'm gonna do today is get the lock mechanism out of that door. And before I go buying a new part, I'm gonna take it apart and see if there's something um, inside that might be able to uh, be fixed or it could be uh, the electronics, the plugs are fouled. Um, I've got some electronic cleaner spray, so I'll do that and throw it back in, see if it works before I spend, uh, you know, 100 to $140, I think is one I saw on eBay. So I'm gonna do that. Um, pull that other wheel off, get it up on jacks, and uh, I might just pull the rear, rear wheels off too and just let it sit on jacks for a little while. Let's go check out that seat, see if we can fix it. I'm back from next door and <laughs> this seat came out so good. Um, I mean, if it wasn't for the residue that's left from the duct tape that the previous owner put on here to cover it up, I just, I wouldn't put seat covers on it, but it uh, looks great. Um, we'll put uh, some black and white seat covers on these, on these to, I guess, just protect them now. And I get them installed back in the car later on, but that's gonna save a couple hundred bucks in seats. Probably more like three or four hundred dollars in seats. All right, well the uh, roar of the heater is on right now, but what I'm doing is uh, I'm gonna take the, the latch out of the door. Got the, uh, uh, whatever that is, vacuum line something. Uh, already disconnected, so I'm gonna take, I've already got these loose, so I'm gonna take these out. 
that should actually free the latch and then there's the rod here that I got to disconnect. Struggling, struggling, struggling. After lots of struggling, I finally got the latch out. So uh, let's see. It would have mounted. It just turned around in the car like that. Getting the uh, rods out of the way, which are, there's two of them there, one by the screwdriver and then the longer one. One rod, of course, is for the lock plunger and the other rod connects to the um, interior door latch, which is also off of the car. So all that had to come out to get this thing out. So I'm going to uh, take this thing apart and uh, see what the inside of this thing looks like, clean it up, put it back together, maybe it works. If not, I'll buy a new one. I said a moment ago about the right-hand strut possibly being um, bent is not correct. This is, this is uh, not a round tube on this side either, but I think what I did just figure out if you look, so this is the this is the camera adjustment bolt. Uh, this one here is just a straight through. This one has some adjustment in it, so when you loosen it, you can um, tilt the wheel in or out. So if you look at where that one is at, pretty pretty uniform spacing around that washer. And then if we go look at the right side. And you can see that one is quite a ways uh, in that way. There's a lot more space and it doesn't take a whole lot of camera adjustment to make a wheel look like it's tilted too far. So I'm gonna do a little reading on this and uh, make sure I, f I get the adjustments correct. Uh, I'm going to soak these in some PB Blaster, and then uh, we'll come back to them and uh, see if we can get the camber set correctly on this side. This is a good thing, I think, because that means that nothing in the suspension or steering is bent, which that's, I feared that because this wheel was, cam what camber was, uh, was that camber out? The bottom of the wheel was out. I was afraid that something, whether it was a control arm, uh, uh, tie rod, uh, idler arm, I, f I thought something was going to be bent. But it doesn't appear as though anything is. I haven't done a full inspection on the underside yet. But I will do that soon. But at least on the suspension, it appears as though this one's just out of camber. So as I go learn about camber in front wheels... Uh, I'm going to end this video. When I come back next time, I will work on getting the uh, camp front camber set. i got to figure out what to do with these wheels. If I'm going to put new hubcaps on these wheels and then put a new tire on that wheel, or it's possible to still use the uh, DR20s that are back here, the drag DR20s. There are two of them are damaged from the curb rash. You can see the damage right there. But these are super cheap wheels. They say equip, they're not equipped. So it's it's feasible to buy two new rims. I've got three good tires. So I buy two new rims and one new tire, have a really nice set of uh, nice looking set of wheels. Or which, I mean, the other thing to think about there is they're super cheap wheels. So how long do they last? Are they really, technically safe. I suppose they probably are. They have DOT stamps on them, so they're probably safe, but I know factory wheels, of course, are, are safe. I mean, they're steel wheels, and if I just do new hubcaps, I still need a new tire for that right front um, because the camera was out so far. It's just worn unevenly. All the other tires are in pretty good shape and have quite a bit of wear left on them, so I'm going to figure all that out, but I'm going to go ahead and end this video 
Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to do so. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let's ratchet it up, everybody. We'll see you next time on Cabrio Love. Thanks for watching.